Hey, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for allowing me the privilege to go on the preach. Um, I always think it's a privilege to go on the preach of the gospel to whoever. So um, I do want to thank y'all. Now, if y'all know me, my name is John Hutton. Um, I actually used to be a runner here at school. I used to run with Chris. Everybody said, hey, Chris. Hey, hey Chris. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Chris used to always beat me. I always hated him for that. But <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. I love him. He and I are great friends. But um, one thing about running is if you are a runner, do not stop. Because if you stop running, you're gonna realize how much you suck whenever you how much you suck whenever you start back running again. Um, because you're you used to be in such a good shape, you know, and you're used to being so fast and healthy, and then you stop running and you're like, man, I've gone I'm, I've gone to the toilet, you know. And so don't stop if you ever stop running. Um, but one thing, the reason why I say that is because a lot of times. When we when we're running in life, when we're doing things in life for the kingdom of God, we like to stop. And it's okay to stop and take breaks every now and again, but but don't stop for longer. You're gonna get out of shape, right? Well, the other day I was I was sitting on my couch and you know I was watching some impractical jokers or something. I don't know, potato <laughs> chips and some glorious sweet tea. You know I, I can't have any of that fake sweet tea you know that they make in the store. I make my own with two cups of sugar, a pitcher, and you know, I was, I was drinking some sweet tea. <laughs> and I, I looked down at my stomach and I said, I've got a pouch. <laughs> you have a pouch? I, I just, I used to be a runner. Like, what's, what, what, what's going on with my body? I, I, I'm getting out of shape. Like, what's wrong? And so I look over at the front door and I see these old dusty running shoes that I haven't worn or ran in a long time. And I said, you know, I'm about to go on a nice evening jog. Anybody like going on a nice evening jog? Occasionally? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Let me tell you, I thought it was going to be such a great idea. Let me tell you, that was probably the worst decision of my life because I died in a quarter of a mile in, you know. And so, nevertheless, I, what I'm trying to say is a lot of times I've found in my Christian walk with Christ, a lot of us like to sit on the couch and and eat our potato chips and drink our sweet tea and watch impractical jokers when it comes to spreading the gospel, when it comes to uh, being good examples to other of what Christ um, has designed us to do. In other words, what I'm trying to say is we get lazy as Christians. We get complacent. We get content with where we are at as Christians, yet Christ didn't call us to be lazy Christians. And in fact, I, I would encourage you to know, to, to understand that if you're a lazy Christian, that's false Christianity. We're, we're not meant to sit on the bench, right? And um, Jesus, he agrees with that. Now, um, Jesus, he, he, he designed us in, in the Great Commission. He told us in the Great Commission that we are to what? Go into all nations and preach the gospel, right? And in doing this, we have to know uh, and understand what the word of God is. We cannot preach the gospel. We cannot be effective Christians if we are not in the word of God. You know, the Bible has something to say about this in Hebrews chapter 4 where it says, For the word of God is living and active. It is sharper. Everybody say sharper. Sharper. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts of intentions of the heart. Now, one thing that I found myself to be guilty of, and something I've noticed that's um, within this generation, in fact, Chris preached about it the other day at my church, is the fact that our generation has become so ignorant to the Word of God. The Bible, it reminds us that in the beginning was the Word, and He was with the Word, and He was the Word. And so when we're complacent and lazy as Christians and sitting on our figurative couch, um, and we're not getting into that word, we're not digging into that word, we're not digging into our relationship with Jesus. How can we have a relationship with Jesus if we don't even know who he is? And the way we find out who Jesus is is by reading that word, right? And so um, let me challenge you real quick. And I only use scripture when I challenge you in this. Describe who Jesus is without theology, without practicality. Just describe who Jesus is.
solely based off of what scripture says. See, there's more to Jesus than what we know to him. Oh, he's he's such a gracious God. He's such a merciful God. Yes, he is. But God is also a God of justice and order. He does, he's not a God of chaos. Jesus is, is, is orderly. Um, and this is why I live by the verse of Colossians uh, 3.23. You know, everything we do, do unto the glory of God. We have to do everything orderly unto his glory. Now, as ministers and preachers, as we all or most of us are going to be, it's very imperative that we understand and know the word of God. Why? Because it is sharp, it's, it's brilliant, it, it's awesome, it's perfect, it's inspired by God. And when we better understand God's word, as a result, according to John 1, we better understand who Jesus is. See, theology is important. Theology can be sexy sometimes, too, because we can, we can kill people in debates. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the, theological Christianity and without relational Christianity needs to come to an end. We all agree with that. Now, I love the Word of God because it's living. Notice you can read like one verse ten different times, and each time get something new out of it. And that's the awesome thing because the Word of God is the living Word, right? And that's because God's Word is alive. It is sharp. It is. It's quick to, to convict us. It's quick to, to talk to us, to speak to us. It's a living word. It's an alive word. But yet when we are not reading the living word, we see that our spiritual relationship with God becomes dead. And see, at what point in our lives are we going to stop being content with our complacency and, and, and call out to the dry bones and say, come alive? Um, we can't be living in the valley of dry bones and expect God to work in our lives. We have to be able to understand that in order for us to come alive spiritually, physically, in every other way, is by reading the scripture on a daily basis. And, and, and it's having a devotion, not just saying, oh, I, I checked out my you version Bible verse of the day. No, that's not a true relationship with God. And so I would just encourage you as ministers that we read the word, that we get closer to God through the word so that we can show others the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to encourage everybody to, um, if you want to build your relationship and be effective witnesses, read God's word every single day. And so if anybody's want to do that, would you please raise your hand? Amen, amen, and amen. Awesome. Thank you.